wonderful to be here, and I do love talking about this. As she told you, Don researched this subject for about 20 years. He did do some audio. I've got it on. Yeah, it's on. Oh, okay. He did do um, some audio recordings because he was a broadcaster and on a recording studio. But I took his recordings and his pencil notes and cut out about 33,000 words <laughs> and created this story. But, you know, when you're talking to people, you're conversational. And you might go back and say, remember when, or think back to, you know, what happened in 1584. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted just a timeline because we can always flip back with the book. So. What you were just watching is very, very interesting. It is actual footage that Don and I took on the Chowan River of when the Elizabeth II, which is a replica of a ship that came to America, and it's, it's the actual footage of the Dorothy replica going all the way to Winton, North Carolina, which there's much documentation that actually happened from Roanoke Island all the way to Winton. So we took that video, and that ship is a very, very real replica. So can you imagine that ship came to America three times, and it had to travel 3,000 miles to get here. So it took about six weeks to get here. So it was quite a commitment when you got on that little ship, two-masted ship, and came to America. So this is a picture of one of the fleets. A lot of the uh, pirateers and pirates <coughs> traveled with fleets. Um, for example, um, there's many as 20 or 23 ships in a fleet. And they would be going to the Caribbean for the rich, riches of the Caribbean, but they would also be pirating and pirateering. So the difference between a pirate and a pirateer is a pirate takes the ship of anybody's stuff. You know, you can be your friend or enemy and I can raid your ship. A pirateer is supposed to be a good guy. He's sort of hired by the queen and he's allowed to take any ship that's not an English ship. So, because we're primarily talking about English people here, so. So, let's see, I went the wrong way. I knew I was going to do that. So there's a picture of Don, and he always had his camera in his hand pretty much, and he was recording Eastern North Carolina history. Some of you may know me from 31 years at Chowan Hospital, and I'm still nursing. I still can't give it up. So Captain Nursing School, it's been 53 years, and I still love it. After Don passed away, he was such an influence on the Roanoke Chowan area that they named the recording studio at the, at the radio station after him. So that was kind of an honor. Okay, so how this story started is Roy Johnson was a publisher in Muffisboro, and he wrote books and published newspapers, and Don interviewed him on the radio. He interviewed many, many, many people. And he learned about this ship, um, Schooner of the Dismal Swamp. So he started reading and researching and thinking about this schooner. And the story was that this ship was last seen in the middle of the 1800s. It's a real ship. It's documented several ways that it was seen by originally by kids playing in the swamp, the edge of the swamp, where they cut the shingles on the lines, mm -hmm. that there would be open lines, and they were playing in there, and they came across the ship. And the ship had a copper bottom. And it was about 40 feet, and it was a two-masted ship. But it was on marshy land, and it was a right good ways from the Chowan River. So it became this real mystery of how in the world this 40-foot ship got up there. So, and it is, I'll show you lots of maps and I can kind of show you where it's at. Um, so Don started researching and talking to people and we have owned every book about North Carolina, east of Raleigh. I think we own it. And I'm actually going to donate all my research books to the, um, to the library through the friends. 
Um, so here's the story of how this all started. Back in 1584, Armadas in Barlow sailing Sir Walter Raleigh's ships. One of those was the Dorothy and one of those was the Bar Raleigh. So does anybody know what describes a ton in a ship back in that day? It's pretty interesting. It's not how much weight you can carry, it's how much wine you can carry. <laughs> <laughs> so these two ships came over and they were owned and sent by Sir Walter Raleigh and he had a long history of being um, a researcher, a shipbuilder, an explorer and so did his brother Humphrey Gilbert. His brother had actually claimed St. John's Bay in Newfoundland in the year before this in 1583 for the Queen. Because what happened back then is if you landed on soil and there wasn't um, a community started that was Spanish or French or um, English, it didn't matter about the Native Americans. They claimed that for their Virgin Queen. That's how easy it was to acquire land. So Sir um, Humphrey Gilbert was in Newfoundland and there was a bad storm and he lost one of his ships with many, many, many settlers that were intended for Newfoundland. And on the way back, there were several ships left, of course four, and he wanted to ride in the Squirrel, travel in the Squirrel, and he was advised not to because it was a small ship and there was a bad storm and he died. That was um, Sir Walter Raleigh's half-brother. So these Native Americans um, observed the ships coming in about where Roanoke Island is and they, they watched them and I love this language. You have to understand that all our research was done reading Old English. And so this is a great example. Let me see if I can get this corner. Is that, that must be that thing. Okay, got it. So here's these two ships, and here comes some Native Americans in their canoe. And what they did was they came aboard the ships. They had some wine. They had some meat. They were very hospitable. They were doing sign language to talk to each other. And when they got out, one of the guys returned to his boat. He failed to fishing. And in less than half an hour, he had laden his boat so deep as it could swim. He divided his fish into two parties, pointing one part to the ship and the other to the Penance, Dorothy. So that's how kind we were met by the Native Americans, that they fished and shared their uh, bounty. So we didn't do that good. <laughs> Armadas and Barlow were welcomed, they were fed, they were bathed, they were taken care of by the women of the tribe, they traded goods, and they observed um, some children that, that appeared to be Caucasian and they asked about that and they said there had been shipwrecks in the past where people had died and then there had been shipwrecks where people hadn't died and so apparently we had some Caucasian people mixed in with the Native Americans. Um, they were treated really well and of course they met Manio and Guanches and actually took them back to England and a lot of this is, you know, everybody knows this is part of the history. They returned to England and they just talked about what a wonderful place the Outer Banks is and we certainly know that to be true. But they talked about the bounty of the fish and the bounty of the wildlife and the beautiful ocean and the sounds. They didn't say anything about the fact that the Roanoke Sound is filled with shoals and it would be hard to navigate a ship in that area. You come up to the ocean, and you know, we have, we are famous for our shoals out there in the ocean too, the Hatteras um, Point, difficult travel. And they knew that it wouldn't be a success, but kind of like what happens sometime today, Sir Walter Raleigh was interested in making money, so he wasn't going to say anything bad about the location. Now, the reason they wanted this location so primarily is because you think about it, the Spanish ships were traveling from the Caribbean and they were laden with gold and <coughs> coins and spices and all kinds of wonderful things. So the whole goal when I mentioned pirateers and pirates 
was they wanted a place to hide where they could pop out and raid a ship. And you think about the Outer Banks, and there were more inlets back then. There were many more inlets, guys, um, even to the north. Um, they would pop out, and they could raid the ship. So and what's the ship going to do about it? Because, you know, they had this harbor. They could just pop out. They couldn't even follow them in there if they went into a chase. So they had the ideal location to pop out. But then they learned that that sound was not real friendly for deep boats. So what happened next was um, Sir Richard Granville transported Ralph Lane. Now Ralph Lane was a military man, and he brought about 107 <coughs> men with him in actual, the actual count. And they lived here for a year. And during that time, John White, everybody knows John <coughs> White, the famous artist. Thomas Harriet was a mathematician, a scientist, a navigator, very, very highly intelligent man. And then Armadas came back with Juan Cheese and Manio. And they came back and they spent a whole year here. And what they were trying to do was find the best way to start a colony, the very best place to start a colony. So they traveled, the video I showed you, they traveled all the way to Winton. Um, they traveled to Plymouth. They traveled all around the area. They up the Croatan Sound. Now when they got here, when they first got here, it was late in the season and the tiger was the queen's gift to this group, Ralph Lane. And the very first thing that happened was the ship was grounded and they lost all that supplies of that tiger. So you'll hear a lot about every time somebody tries to help, the ship gets messed up and they lose all the supplies. So the Dorothy um, was also on that voyage. So right away we've got supply issues. So Ralph Lane was, was kind of mean. He was very mean to the Indians. And this is the preferred routes, the way they got here. See, they follow the currents. The currents were so helpful. Wait a minute. I didn't mean to do that. Um, see, they come down from England and they follow the coast of Africa and come over by the Caribbean and come back up and get on, hop on the Gulf Stream and go back. So that's 6,000 miles, but it travels better when you work with the flow of the water. So that's why they would do that. They'd hop on the Gulf Stream, and we hear lots about the Gulf Stream. So in October of that year that they were here, they went out in the ocean on um, Dorothy. They had Dorothy, and they went to Chesapeake Bay to explore, and they really liked what they saw. But, you know, there was 108 men there, and this was just a party that went exploring. And then another time, they went to um, up the Chowan River, and where Harrisville is, there was, they found a village. Um, and there's a sign, this is the actual sign that's that now. The Chowanock village had 2,000 people and 700 warriors. And King Anadanon was the king of all the river Indians, Native Americans, of the Mango, on the Plymouth area, of the Wepameoc, which we've got here in town, you see the sign, um, King Okisko, and the Roanoke Indians. He was the king of all of them. So they go up there and they were really mean to him. They tied him up for two days. They restrained him, trying to get information on how they could get to Chesapeake Bay by not going back out to the ocean, a way, an inland way to do that. Um, do we know why they were afraid to go back at the Chesapeake Bay just a couple of hours up the coast? Well, the goal was to have a colony and just explore the whole area. And you know, there was 108 men, so they couldn't all go. So they were just exploring everywhere. And they decide to go to Chesapeake. That's a firm decision after doing this research. Lane um, kid, kidnapped Skyco, which was his heir. I didn't say son. Back then, you didn't have to, they used the word heir. So we don't know if that was um, King Mananon's son. Um, and he told Lane, this is very important, <laughs> I can't get my buttons straight. 
he told Wayne about a route that was three days up the Chowan River and four days across land to a deep bay with many pearls. That was Chesapeake Bay. Um, Ralph Lane was also looking for a route to the Pacific. They were convinced that on the coast that you could just get on this one river and go all the way to the west coast. Um, but obviously you can't. <laughs> Not, not as easy as they thought. <laughs> okay, so he told them about this path, and what he was saying was um, go up the Chowan River and go, when it turns at the Baharan River, go up to the north, and then you could go across land. And I've got lots of maps, I'll show you lots more maps. Come in. <laughs> So here's the village. Has anybody ever heard of Holiday Island? That's out in the Chowan River. You know, there's more than one, not the Hertford one. There's a, a just a woods, that's all it is. But it's an island right there. And that's where it's going to be a critical part of this information. So there's a Holiday Island. Here's the Chonoke Village on the Wicacon. And then here is the famous creek we're going to talk about a lot. So, so here's the proof, you know, as far as those things go, that Lane went all the way to Winton because they explored all the way up there. Okay, so here's some more pictures of stuff on the Chowan River, and these creeks are going to be important. We're going to talk about them again. But the Chowan River goes, it goes um, north and then it turns to the west and then it turns back to the north. And that's the, the end of Winton right in there where that Thad Ural Bridge is. It's what we call it the Little Chowan River Bridge. And that's just a picture of the ship. And remember we had John White, Thomas Harriet. Thomas Harriet was working on mathematical co calculations to create a map. And John White was drawing the, the phone, the foliage, the river, the fish, the weirs, the fishing weirs that are still on the river in the same shape they were then to this day. And they together created this map um, that is in the uh, museum in London and is so close to being accurate to what we actually still look like today, the Virginia Pars. Okay, so Ralph Lane documented, this is written stuff, guys, that the eastern um, sounds were full of shoals, that the Abramal was good for <coughs> shipping and the Chowan River was deep and relatively calm, not affected by the wind. He declared the Caratop, the Roanoke, the Croatan, and Pamlico sounds full of shoals, and the Roanoke River dangerous and full of current. This is before the dam. So Ralph Lane depended on the Native Americans. They came late in the season. They were not able to even take care of themselves. They took care, they depended on the Native Americans for food and resources. Um, the Native Americans, um, Ralph Lane actually killed Wingina, which was the chief of the Roanoke tribe. And it, they were just awful to the Indians and they, they murdered him and so that was the end of like they were living on running island and they just murdered the indian chief of that area so they they were in a bind so what happened next is they were running low on supplies they lost their goodwill with the native americans sir francis drake shows up with 23 ships and he said, I'll give you a ship and, you know, give you supplies and you can stay longer. And I'm headed down to the Caribbean. And then um, a bad storm came up. And I'm getting ahead of the slide. But a bad storm came up and they made, they changed their mind. But anyway, this I need to tell you this because um, there was a Spanish settlement in St. Petersburg, which is close to Tampa. And he had raided them, took the doors off the frames, stole the slaves. I mean, they were mean. And then there was a French settlement on the Chesapeake Bay before all this started. Of Jesu, I'm not so sure I'm saying that right. It's a religion. Jesuit. 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 Thanks. Thanks. 
and they murdered all them. The Native Americans may have been the one that did that, but there were hostilities, we'll say. So they get, they get, um, and he offers to help them. He's friendly to his English people. So they loaded the ship, and then there was a storm, and the, the ship had to disappear, and he said, we got to go. Do you want to go with us or not? And they decided to go. So they left after one year. They, there was no gold, no harbor, no way to the Pacific Ocean, but they had created Virginia Cars, which is the 1585 map that I spoke about that is still accurate to this day. They also sent three men all the way back up the Cholon River to return Skyco because Skyco had been a friend and Manadanon had tried to remain a friend and never ever any hostilities between the Choanoke Indians and Ralph Lane. Now the Roanokes had been fighting, you know, because he deserved it. <laughs> Just my opinion. So here they go, they're ready to go and there's a storm. Of course there's a storm. We live in eastern North Carolina. So the storm raged for four days and in the process of loading some of John White's valuable research and valuable paintings that tell us what the world was like back then, they lost some of that stuff. <coughs> the sailors were ill and they weren't taking care of things properly. So they left in 1586 uh, in June. So they'd been there right at a year and they did not go get the three men. So here we go, we got three white men stuck on the Chowan River somewhere, you hear me? So, okay. so I'm just saying when, when people say it's because there's white people, white Indians kind of thing somewhere, this has been going on since 1586, there's been white men over here. Okay, within days of Lane's departure, here comes the supply ship that was supposed to help them. They didn't see anybody, and they went back to England. And then, it gets worse about these white men, there's more of them, here we come. Granville <laughs> arrived a fourth night, that's two weeks later, after Lane's departure, and he, the natives told him what had happened, they left. And Granville, he didn't know about all the hostility. He had 400 men. He left 15. He left 15 men that were never seen again. So three ships, the Lion, a fly boat, Dorothy left. Okay, this is now, we've, we've done this research. We've decided that we're going to go to Chesapeake. That's a decision. The Queen, <coughs> Sir Walter Raleigh, we are going to the Chesapeake Bay. But they don't make it. They get left at Roanoke Island. So three ships are coming, the Lion, which is that 200 ton, a fly boat, which is a fast ship, and Dorothy left England. They, they made a couple of stops. They left Portsmouth, England, and they stopped for supplies, and they stopped for conversation about resupply, and they traveled 3,000 miles getting here on July 22nd. John White was the governor, and he brought 117 men, women, and children. So their destination was Chesapeake Bay, but Captain Simon Fernando, there's an outlet, there was an outlet there that at that time that they named it for him, but it's now there's just a, a highway marker. Um, sit right there by the Roanoke Island. He was anxious to go pirateering. So he abandoned them on Roanoke Island, which is not where they were supposed to be. So Manio is christened Lord of Roanoke, and Virginia Dare is born, and another baby's born, but none of the documentation says what, um, what um, sex. So they arrived too late to plant corn, and they made this decision that John White needs to go back and get supplies because, you know, they got messed up, they didn't go where they were going, they don't have enough stuff, and they need help. So he leaves to go back. There's a hurricane and he gets delayed six days. Another storm. <laughs> they let me know when it's like 16 or something, just to say hi, because I can get worried. <laughs> um, so there's a hurricane, so he's even delayed, and so he finally leaves on August 27. Okay, so just so you know, I mean, you guys know, but this is like my pier and it's missing a part, and you know, 
the river gets rough, the sound gets rough, the water gets high when we're having hurricanes. So there was a hurricane August 21st, which delayed his departure. And then there was one September 10th. So that's two hurricanes back to back. We've been there, done that? Right. So you understand. So the recorded plan, and this is history, guys. This is not fiction. The Secretary of State and John White both wrote reports that they were supposed to go 50 miles inland. This what they left, worked their way inland on the Nanonon's way, his route, and get to Chesapeake Bay. Well, they were left with one ship and four boats. I'll tell you about the boats. So they knew they had the Virginia Pars. They knew about the Manadanon's Trail and the Interbanks route by the current map, only safe way to travel, because they only had one ship and there was a hundred and, what did I say, a hundred and, now they've had two babies, good gosh, it's 119 people were not going to fit on that boat. So, they need help. So, just looking at it, um, this is, so this is Roanoke Island, and this comes up to the Admiral Sound, and they are trying to get up in here. We'll look at the next slide. So the next slide tells, um, and these are representations of John White's work. So here's Roanoke Island, and they need to get to here. So they can't come this way because there's too many people on one ship in the four boats. A boat held 20 people, so that's still not enough. And those boats were not ocean worthy. So they want to do what Manadanon told them to do. Now they had explored the Roanoke River too, but they knew that that wasn't going to help them do anything. In fact, they spent four days trying to get up the Roanoke River, ate a couple of dogs, had a big time, got in a fight with the mangoes, almost got murdered, and then when they came back, the current's so swift, it took them a day to get back, or it took them four days to get up. So, so what we see here is, you know, that's like what it looks like, his, you know, his vamps which are just amazing, they're just amazing. So here we go, there's the Admiral Sound, and we know all this stuff. Like, here's all these rivers up down, there's the Chowan River, but that, here's Roanoke Island, and there's the Admiral Sound. And it's good for shipping, remember, and deep, and the Chowan River is, has, is very deep. So that's what they were trying to do to get there. So what happens, I mean, we don't know what happens. See, I know I've repeated all these facts to you, but I can't really tell you what happened. I am a pilot, and this is a picture I took at 10,000 feet. I was not flying the airplane while I was taking the picture. <laughs> so. <laughs> so there's the Outer Banks. Is that not so cool? I mean, we just live in paradise. So in another picture, I did take while flying the airplane. I took that picture, which is the Chowan River and the Admiral Sound on the right. How'd they get those sailboats under that bridge? <laughs> well, now they got the hump, so it's a lot easier. I remember. This is actually my home, and I live on the bluffs, which they would have seen of the Chowan River. That's my home, and that's my barn. So this is um, the steep cliffs of the Chowan River. Drawn footage of Bertie's side after Matthew, and Matthew did take a little cliff land. So again, there's the cliffs that they would have transported by. Okay, and I, I gotta break out and talk about the Suffolk Scarp for just a minute because it's just so interesting. And I brought uh, coral and clam shells. There's all kinds of shells that we pick up all the time in these cliffs. Because you know, the ocean was there at one time. That's the Suffolk Scarp. And it's filled with shells that are I can't quote you how old they are, but it, it's there they are from. It's pretty interesting. So this is what the cliffs like where I live looks like. It's just full of shells. Very interesting. So here's a great picture for you guys to look at. Now remember they had a map and they were supposed to go up the Chowan River and there's Holiday Island and they were supposed to go north. That's what all the directions were. Well, 
That is Bennett's Creek, and I'm going to show you better picture of this is Dismal Swamp, and this is Bennett's Creek right here. And when you pass Holiday Island, and you don't have longitude in that year, you turn north, and there's your north. And remember, we just had two hurricanes, so the water is very high. With Floyd, the water came up four feet, was stable at four feet. It came up about eight feet, but it was stable at about four feet. They were supposed to go here and then come across. This is the land route right there that they were supposed to take. So I'll explain it a little better as we go. So Seal and I were on the boat in March, my friend Seal, and we took a picture of Bennett's Creek. Now, does that look like a creek to you, all that? I look like Bennett's Creek anyway. Is the opening to Bennett's Creek. Uh -huh. And it looks like a river. Uh -huh. And here's Holiday Island, so you're supposed to turn north after the map ends. The map is in, and here's the Chonoaks all looking at you over here. Uh -huh. And they're friendly, <laughs> but you're right here. You're supposed to turn north. Why wouldn't you? Why in the world would they think they needed to go further and further and then turn north? So this was a flooded area and it's a very wide mouth creek. Let's see about that creek. It's a nice little creek. So again, here's pictures of Bennett's Creek. It goes all the way to Merchant's Mill Pond and continues into the Dismal Swamp. Now, again, the creek is flooded with about four feet of more water. Now, this is theory. I've told you all these facts, but now we're talking theory. Okay, and again, just more pictures of how, the, how they should have gone all the way to there, and they could have turned right there. Okay, and that's just a, a key to the... Okay, so the Spanish Armada and war with England prevented White from returning to his colony. So he did, he tried, he tried more than once actually, but he finally made it in 1590. And this is what he found. We all know what he found. He, saw, he found the word crow on a tree and he found the word croatan on the frame of a door. Now the agreement when he left, this is fact, was said right where you're going on a tree. And if you're in distress, do a Maltese cross. So there was no Maltese cross. Now, Croatan was friendly to them. That's where Manio lived. But there was 119 people. And they had no way to get there safely, all of them. But they, they could have managed. But that area would not support them. It was a small village of Hatteras, Buxton and it could not have supported 119 people. So we start thinking that maybe they divided and conquered, and some of them did what they said they were going to do, go 50 miles inland. Buxton, Hatteras, Croatan is not inland. It's down below you a little bit. So their small area would not have, would, they couldn't have survived there. So, in these rough seas, here's John White looking for his daughter, his son-in-law, and his grandchild, Virginia Dale. And seven men get lost. You know it was a storm. And they lost four anchors. Um, they tried multiple days, about three days, to try to get to explore. And they never found anybody. But what they did find was you know, the words. And then they went around to the sound the Roanoke Sound, and they saw, well, the ship is gone. And there was four, um, wait a minute, did the ship and other three boats head for? Okay, none of the ships were there. There were four ships, and there, I'm so sorry, four boats and one ship. Now, the reason I know there were four boats was when the fly boat got back to England. Remember, they left. Simon Fernando went shopping, and the fly boat went straight back to England. Left Dorothy there. Was when they got back, they couldn't get in. They couldn't get out and come in. They had to be boated in because they didn't have any boats. That's documented fact. When Fernando stopped chasing wealth and came back. He got stuck in the harbor, had to wait for people to bring him boats so he could get to shore. 
So they did not have any boats, and those ships always carried two boats. So they had four boats and one ship. So we're thinking, okay, so the boats are gone, the ship's gone, they lived on an island, so maybe they, you know. So what we're thinking is Salmon Creek, which is on Site X, it's on the Airmont Sound, it faces Edenton, it's where Scotch Hall is now, they've changed the name. Mm. But that was a trading center for, for the Mangoes, for the Repermiot, for the um, Choanoke, for the entire area. So what we're thinking, did some stay at Salmon Creek? Because they would have transversed, you know, like on their ship at the four boats, they would have traveled not far, you know, up the Airborne Sound from Roanoke Island. And they would have arrived at the mouth of the Chilmon River, the mouth of the Roanoke River, the mouth of the uh, Middle River. And there was, there was this, you know, friendly Indians there. The Repameoc, some of them were living at Salmon Creek. And they found evidence that this a small group of people were there. And we're going to talk about that the 16th. Yeah. It's 10 after things. That helps me. Thank you. So we have evidence that Englishmen were there by fishware and other things. So again, Don and I feel like a small group stayed there. A small group went to Man um, Croatan. And we feel like the rest of them transversed the Chowan River as they said they were, as Renatanon had taught them how to. So if they did that, and again they made the wrong turn, they eventually would have run into a dry, swampy patch where they could not travel anymore. And that might very well be why there's a ship. This ship has been there so long that in the 1700s, um, a gristmill was built. I believe that one's called Hunters. It, this ship had to be there before that gristmill was built in 1700. Had to be there. So Sir Walter Raleigh invented the copper bottom ship, and he wrote a book. When Queen Elizabeth died, he was put in prison. He befriended um, King James's son, but the son died, and he had written a book, a very thorough book about shipbuilding. And he documented in there that he created the um, copper bottom ship. Dorothy was left for the 1587 colony. There is a copper bottom <coughs> ship located at the northern end of Bennett's Creek, last seen in the mid-1800s in a severely decayed state. How did it get there? I want to go back for a second and tell you how Dorothy got, um, got her name. Um, Dorothy, the boat, Sir Walter Raleigh had lots of ships, probably about 20, and he named them after things that he loved, like deer and people and stuff like that. So he tried to always stay in Queen Elizabeth's favor. Well, you know, Queen Elizabeth's mother was beheaded. So um, then she was raised by her mother's sister, Anne Berlin, was murdered. Then her sister Mary, she was raised by her and she died. And then her, um, then she was raised by Dorothy Stafford. The, um, the cousins got married really quick, so um, he married um, his cousin. And um, that would have been Mary's husband married his cousin. And her name was Dorothy. And they lived together for the rest of Queen Elizabeth's life. So that's why the ship was named Dorothy, because Sir Walter Raleigh was always trying to stay in his best graces. So Hunter's Mill Pond, I told you about that, you know, had to be. Remember hurricanes raised the level of the river. Remember they were told to turn north to follow the Chowan River, and Bennett's Creek was a north turn where the map you know, was right there telling them what to do until that point, then they were lost, and they did not have longitude in that year. So there's been some terra server footage seen of a ship, and they went there, but they couldn't find anything because they didn't have the right permits. Um, also, there's the remnants of two unusual-looking 20-foot boats that are very, 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 very decayed in these two creeks I pointed out to you. 
which would have been part of the exploration that you would do when you were um, traveling with the ship. The boats went ahead and sounded out so they wouldn't get stranded in shallow water. So there's a picture. We had a sailboat. We named it Manadanon. Mm -hmm. And so there's Don headed out to our sailboat. We had in front of the house. We did a lot of research on the sailboat and lots of other ways. So it's just a theory. I showed you lots of facts, but there's also a theory in there. So anyway, thank you for listening. And what kind of We are not having armchair next week, yes. Columbus Day, so we're taking that one week off, and then we have two more talks, and um, uh, we're having to talk about the Lost Colony set Settlers at Site X, which I spoke Nick, about, mm -hmm. and Nick and is going to be talking about that, and then Margaret uh, Miller Grove Pro is going to come over here and, and reprise her talk and tell us the new information about uh, her Outer Banks uh, program that we're going to see snippets that are going to be um, eventually shown on PBS. So uh, those are going to be two really great talks. But if anybody has any questions for Lucy. Lloyd, that's why I told you not to travel on a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I think it's just so interesting. You know when uh, Fernando, what his name was. Yeah, Simon he, Fernando. And I always thought he might uh, have sold the English out. He he, he uh, was maybe favoring the Spanish or something and didn't want them to establish a good colony in Chesapeake because he just kind of sold them out. Or he, he, well, he, that know, may have been one of the reasons because I understand he was not friendly to them. No, he and John White purely hated each other. And um, he did not want them to be successful because he was busy trying to get rich himself, you know. So, good point, yes, sir. Bennett's Mill yes. is, it couldn't possibly be on the creek that they went on, can it? Um, you mean the, the mill in um, yeah, Toronto County? It's up Route 32. Yeah, it's a different mill. It, it's a, They're both the same. But they named it after Bennett anyway. <coughs> I don't know how you got his name, yeah. but they, they're not the same bodies they're, they're of water at all. They're not even close. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. Yes. Regarding that ship or those copper bottom that they discovered in the mid 1800s, yeah. what, that article in the beginning where the boys discovered it, that it, was that it then that they discovered it? Yeah, in the yeah. It was by kids, and then they grew up, and then they went back looking for it, and yeah. they, you know, this tail kept getting passed along. But did they? didn't have any artifacts from it, no pieces of wood, no pieces of copper? Um, that's a good question. The copper was, they, they believe, lots of people believe, that the copper was raided, and the na even the nails would have been raided. The only thing that we think would be there, there the, the wood's unusual, and it may very well be some remnants of wood, but the shoes, you know how, um, I can't think of the name of the place, but in Virginia, like the Museum of the Avermall, they've got a barrel of shoes that date back to the 1600s. And that tannic acid preserves things. So we feel like there could very well be, there was, could be 40 people on that ship. There could be you know, 80 shoes there. Wouldn't that be something? It would be. And there's been talk about researching that people have, uh, I actually know someone that has, um, dived in that area and seen remnants. Oh, wow. So it's there, but it's in a terrible swamp. And yeah. not, it's a good swamp for the nature, but not for walking around in. Um, so it's just so dangerous to evacuate it and it take lots of money and the right people want to Is see it what private it property? Part of it is, and then part of it is part of the uh, Cholino, um reserve that they got back. They had sold it. Um, some of that's rumored. There are Cholino people left. You know, there are lots of mixed blood, but there are some Cho people who say they're Cholino because their race was literally wiped out. Um, and, but they managed to get their land back. So. 
that good question. It's been yeah, very, I'm glad you asked that, Kay. That's a great question. So, anything else? All right. Well, thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.